In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this stack sprite car. Now, stack sprite is a sort of technique for creating this isometric look where you start with a voxel image, which is 3D, but you export it as a series of 2D sprite slices, and then you rebuild those slices sort of with a positional offset. And you export it, this is how what it looks like when you export the slices. And I'll show you now with the car, if I increase the offset, you can see sort of how this actually works. You can see each of the individual slices in the car. And if we bring those all the way down and maintain it a small offset, you get this sort of isometric car. Okay, so let's start by creating the base stacked sprite scene that we're going to be able to reuse for the car. And uh, so we'll start with a sprite and pass it the slices. And we're, we're actually just going to use this base sprite as a, as a reference. It's not actually going to contribute to the stacked sprite. So let's give it the number of frames that it needs. We'll save it as stacked sprite. And all of the sort of slices that we're going to be generating in this car, we're going to do that in code. So all of these slices will be generated in code. So I'll show you how that works. So create a script and we'll go ahead and create a function called render sprites and what that's going to do is is instance all of those slices that you saw in this car earlier so we'll say next sprite is sprite.new so we're going to create a new sprite in, in code and then we'll say next sprite and we're going to feed it all of the information that's that's held in this base sprite. So we're using this information as a reference to generate the sprites as children. So so the texture will be the base texture, the H frames will be the same number of horizontal frames, but the uh, f frame for this, uh, oh also I should mention we're gonna have to iterate between 0 and the number of horizontal frames we have, so that's how many sprites we're gonna generate and the frame will be i and uh, as of right now all of these sprites would generate in the same position but we need to make sure this is pretty important we have to make sure that we give it the right offset and we're going to do that with negative i so the zero with one is going to have no offset the first frame is going to have minus one in the y and then we'll just add all of these sprites as children to this sprite and then we'll go ahead and render it in the ready function and see what this looks like. So let's run the scene. All right, so we have the car can't move and it's not able to rotate. And we also can't see it what it looks like in the editor. So we'll start by addressing seeing it in the editor. So seeing it in the editor is actually kind of a hack. This is something where because we're generating it on the fly, the only way to actually see it in the editor is to be able to run code in the editor, which Godot lets you do by just putting the word tool at the front. And then we'll export a uh, Boolean variable called um, show sprites, and we'll give it a default value of false, and I'll show you, we'll turn it on in a second. Set show sprites, and we'll basically define this setter, which is gonna call this function every time we toggle show sprites um, in the editor and we'll start by setting the value to be whatever we're setting in the editor and then we'll also render the sprites if we if it's true so we'll render the sprites otherwise we will clear the sprites and that is for sprites in get children sprites dot free and we also should clear the sprites before we render anyways so here's what that looks like so we press toggle we show sprites and uh, we probably don't even need to render the space sprite so I'm just gonna set it to be invisible so it doesn't get in the way with the children that get rendered cool so now it looks like that and just to hammer home this point of the sprite generation if I run this scene and take a look at what's actually happening, you'll notice that this stack sprite is generating all of these sprites as children. So it's not one sprite that you're looking at. Again, it's all of the stacks that are being created over here.
Cool. So let's get some rotation going so that we could see how it actually looks when it's rotating. So I'm going to export another Boolean called rotate sprites. And this will be pretty similar as far as the uh, setter goes. I'm just going to do that so that we can set it from the editor. And then how do we actually rotate this thing? Well, if we rotate it in the editor, it doesn't exactly do what we want. And that's because we need to actually be rotating every slice of the entire thing, not, not the top level parent. So we basically need to go through each child and set the rotation manually. So this is what that looks like. So we'll create process function and we'll go through each sprite um, that's currently active and set this each individual sprites rotation and just for testing we'll set it to we'll just add delta to it and there we go so now it's able to rotate and we can show this in the editor as well by um, setting the rotation only if rotate sprites is active so now we have the ability to should have the ability to do it from the editor sometimes we reopen it. There we go. Okay. Yeah, sometimes it, Godot is a little finicky with when you're running code in the editor. So sometimes you have to close this, the scene and reopen it. Okay. But anyways, there we go. So now we can see exactly what our stack looks like. We can see what it looks like while it's rotating. Make sure everything's okay. We don't have to guess, even though stuff is being generated. So we've got our stack sprite. We have the ability to rotate. And now let's actually create the, the car scene that will allow us to move it around and play with it. So we've got our base generic stack sprite, create a new scene, give it a kinematic body, call this car, save it, and basically going to be recreating this finished one over here. So give it a collision shape, um, this is basically going to act as the collider and we'll instance our stack sprite. And I'll just reset this position so that it's reset over here. Okay, so now we're just gonna do some pretty generic, uh, you know, Godot physics stuff here. Nothing, nothing too, too fancy. So we'll go physics process. We'll have a velocity as well as our input vector. And our input vector is going to start out as empty and we'll go ahead and grab our x to be uh, based on what buttons we're pressing. So for, for our x values, it'll be right minus left. And these are going to capture inputs depending on what we have set in our input map. In this case, UI left and UI right captures you know left arrow, right arrow, WASD that kind of stuff. And so grab our, and this is this is sort of a shortcut. Um, you can do like input dot is action just pressed and then add a value. This is just a little bit more succinct. So then we'll do UI down minus UI up. Okay, great. And then we'll just for, to include some acceleration in the car, I mean, we can just set the, we can just do something like move and slide. Yeah, we'll, we'll start with this just to get, keep things simple. We'll just do velocity equals um, our inputs and we'll get a speed going. So we'll do input times speed and then we'll slide by that velocity. And let's make sure that we get something working first. Okay, so it's pretty, pretty slow. So let's go like 130. That's faster. Obviously, we don't have the rotation yet, but just, you know, you got to start with something. So we'll get the movement working first. So to get some acceleration, because cars usually accelerate and decelerate, we'll, um, we'll actually go ahead and do some lerping. We'll lerp from our velocity, which starts at zero, and we'll go slowly from our velocity to whatever uh, input time speed we're trying to get to and I'll just throw in 
um, an acceleration as well. Acceleration times delta. And so yeah, so there's a little bit of acceleration and deceleration going on. It, I mean, it could be better, but I think this is OK for this example. And finally, we want to do the actual rotation. So again, with the rotation, we can't just rotate at the top level because it doesn't rotate everything uh, at, the, at the sliced stack level, which is what we want. We don't want to do it at the top level. So we're going to go ahead and create a function called set rotation, where when the car calls this on the stack sprite, it will set it for every slice um, in its children. So we'll go sprite.rotation equals rotation. And now here, we need to figure out what rotation we're at. And so we can get that based on what direction we're trying to move in, which we have as a vector. So we can use our input vector and convert that into an angle that we can pass to the stacked sprite. So we'll start by doing, um, we'll grab our stacked sprite and we'll call this set rotation function that we just created. And we'll start by converting our input into an angle and just see what that looks like. Okay, so the rotations are a bit off. And the reason for this is they're off by the same amount. And that's because the car already starts facing down, not facing up. So we can fix this by subtracting um, like 90 degrees. So we'll use degrees to radian and we'll pass in 90. Okay, so that seems to be working. Another issue is it, it keeps converting back to its previous direction. So we only want to actually set the rotation angle if our input is not zero. So let's do that. So it maintains the, the angle that it was in. And then finally, we are kind of chunking right now because our input is constricted to certain directions. So instead of using our input, let's use our velocity. And that's the one that's smoother and lerps. And there you go. That's your stacked sprite car. Now, there's one more thing I want to point out here, which is that the pixels, uh, kind of the resolution is a little bit chunky, which is my personal preference. But if this is too blocky and isometric for you, what you can do is you can go to the project settings and come down to display window. And instead of viewport keep, you can do 2D keep. And this should create a more smooth look if that's something you're looking for. Cool. Thanks for watching.